Namaste. Welcome to Purusha and Prakriti. To understand the concepts of this class, we need to think back to the origins of yoga and what yoga started off as is not what yoga is today, but it's still within it. It's all connected and I'm hoping by the end of this class, you're gonna to start to see those connections a little bit more clearly. So Purusha is divine consciousness. It's said to be the essence of everything. And Prakriti is a term used to describe the physical plane, your body, your mind, your heart, objects, animals, other people, our physical reality. Now, Purusha can be described like the seed of a lotus flower. And that seed is put into the mud of life. And this mud is resistance, it's challenges, it's the fluctuations of physical reality which stimulate growth. And so the seed starts to turn into a lotus and it slowly starts to grow through experience, up through the mud, through the water, and it becomes a beautiful lotus flower, one of the most sacred symbols in spirituality. But what is the purpose of a lotus flower? What is the purpose or dharma of our life? To create the seeds or the essence for more purusha, another seed for a lotus to grow from. And so prakriti creates purusha, but purusha is prakriti. Divine consciousness is everywhere for us to connect to, but it's through prakriti, this physical existence, that we can come into a deeper connection with Purusha. These are deep concepts, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to embody these. And that's part of our modern yoga practice, Hatha yoga, Vinyasa, all of these yogas. These are Prakriti, the physical embodiment to help us. We use our body, our mind, and our heart like tools to deepen our connection to Purusha, to our soul's essence. The ancient yogis used to practice pratyahara. They would withdraw into caves, some of them for over three years, looking for enlightenment, and some of them found it. But the question is, do we not have a body, a mind, and a heart for a reason? Are we not meant to live out our lives on this plane of existence, at least for this time? And so we use our practice as a reminder that we are Purusha, but we don't just get lost in Purusha. We don't try to surrender our existence, but we try to deepen our connection to this physical existence by taking a step back. Hopefully we can uh, feel this because I know that understanding it is pretty hard. These concepts weren't necessarily meant for you to understand with the irrationing mind, but more so to feel a vibration. So to help you feel that vibration, centering yourself, chanting the sacred sound of all. Let's take a deep breath in. Closing your eyes. Inhale to prepare. Feeling the physical vibration moving through your body. So Prakriti would be the heard sound of Om, and Purusha would be the felt sense of Om. Om is said to resonate at the baseline frequency of the universe. And so we want to resonate with the baseline frequency of our soul through our body. Let's come into our tabletop position. Shoulders over palms, hips over your knees, flex your fingers, tuck your toes. I'm wearing socks because it's a little bit cold here right now, but uh, you know, just embody the practice however you want. Let's get out, extend your right leg back. And then as you exhale, we're gonna do what's called a fire hydrant. We're gonna draw your right knee to your right shoulder, a little side crunch. And now extend back, toes face down. 
Exhale, fire hydrant, knee to shoulder. Can you keep your arms straight? Inhale, extending back. Exhale, fire hydrant, little side crunch through the obliques. Inhale, lengthen, squeeze your thighs. Exhale, fire hydrant, knee up high if you can. Last time, breathe in. Then as you exhale, fire hydrant and pause with your hip open. Now we're gonna inhale, extend your right leg to the right. The next let's bend your knee, heel to your butt. Inhale, extend your leg, you can point your flex. Exhale, bend. Inhale, lengthen straight arms. Exhale, bend your knee. Just two more. Inhale for the hamstring. Exhale into your glute. One more time, inhale, lengthen. Then exhale, place your foot down beside you so the blade edge of your foot is on the mat. Now we want your foot, your heel in line with your knee so you can adjust the stance and then use your core to zip up into your gate pose. Relax your shoulders, pull your foot in towards your knee and breathe. We want to tuck your tail. Now we're going to reach your left arm high, as high up as you can go and then exhale half moon, reach up and over. Now you can pulse if you feel a little tight. Like I said, I'm feeling a bit cold, so I want to move to generate some heat. The best heat will be created from your breath, in and out through your nose, uja. But if you want to find stillness, find stillness. Eventually, you might be able to touch the floor with that bottom arm, but don't force it if you're not feeling it. In our reach up, exhale, modified side plank, place your left fingers down to the mat. In a utita, top arm over your ear, feeling the side body stretch, but keep your foot and your knee pulling towards each other. Now, a little challenge here, can you start to take away your thumb, your pinky finger, your ring finger, your pointer finger, don't leave that middle finger down, can you start to hover your hand off the floor? Now, I didn't lift up, I can still touch the mat, I just took the weight up. Can you use your core? Keep reaching over through your top arm. Can you breathe? Inhale, rise up. Inhale, as your fingers, Kali Mudra is kind of like a squirt gun. Take a deep breath in, tuck up your pelvis. Exhale, full moon, reach up and over through both arms this time. Once again, maybe little pulses. Taking your time. Slowly creating more and more space through the armpit the ribs, the hips, the thighs. Take a full breath up. Take a full breath up. In our rise up. Exhale, lower your hands down. Good flexing your fingers. Let's inhale, shift forward, almost like cow pose. You can arch you back. And then exhale, shift back a little bit like our cat pose. In our, I lean into my wrist. Exhale, shift back into my hips. Now, if this feels good, Feel free to go wider through your hips. Make sure your pinky toe stays down and toes face forward. If your foot turns sideways or your pinky toe is lifting up, it means you're too tight. You might be able to come down to your forearms. But be gentle. We're working with some sensitive areas of the body, the pelvic floor. Don't force this flexibility. Allow it to happen. Actively engage your leg, pulling the thigh, quad, calf up and in. Deep breath in, full breath out. You know, come onto your hands, adjust your left knee if you did. Exhale, pick up your right foot beside you by your high grip, and then step outside your right hand, runner's lunge. Now you might have to walk your hands forward, or maybe you smooth out your back leg. Right knee is on top of your ankle, toes are slightly at an angle. Now this is where you may or may not use blocks. If you have blocks, use them. If you don't, maybe stay on your hands. Don't worry about coming down to your forearms quite yet, unless you really want to. I like to just move. So you might get flexed up. I want you to open up. Not through force, through encouragement of the breath. In and out through the nose. Take a deep breath in, pick up your back knee. Exhale, malasana, frog squat, step your feet outside of your hands. Hands come to heart center, relax your shoulders. Can you use your elbows to wedge open the knees? Can you sit the crown of your head up taller while sinking your hips down lower? 
And then can you set an intention, a purpose for your practice? Maybe it's to move soulfully today. Or maybe it's to use this experience, this physical practice, to ground your energy, to focus you in this moment, the here and now. Take a deep breath in. Take a full breath out, release your hands, step, walk, or jump, down dog, auto mobile shimanasana. And then drop down to your knees, tabletop position, and we'll do the other side. So inhale, extend your left leg behind you, and exhale, fire hydrant knee to your shoulder. Inhale, lengthen back, toes down. Exhale, fire hydrant, toes sideways. Inhale. Full exhale, push through the palms. Three. Inhale. Exhale, wrap your elbows in. Two. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, fire hydrant and pause. And now extend the left leg sideways. Exhale, bend the knees, squeeze your heel above. And now extend it. Exhale, bend. We got three more. In out lengthens. Exhale, shortens. Inhale. Exhale. And then last time we're gonna inhale and place your foot down beside you. Good, so pulling your foot lightly towards your knee. Engaging your core so we can rise up softly into our gate pose. You're always welcome to adjust your stance. You can go wider or narrower. Good, make sure the blade edge of your foot is pressing down. And now let's reach your right arm high. Exhale, half moon, reach up and over. So left hand can slide down your leg. They can hang down to a block. Eventually it's gonna to touch the floor, but don't force it. Maybe little pulses or fine stillness. We're working with some tight areas of the body. Not really focusing too much on the big muscles, but the connected muscles. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, modified side plank, right hand down, maybe on your fingertips. Reach your top arm over your patita, engage your pelvic floor. Maybe you come on to four fingers, maybe three, maybe two, maybe just one fingertip, maybe none. I don't lift up though, I just take the weight up. I'm reaching my top arm over my ear, I'm pressing my pelvis forward, most of all, I'm breathing. Hold the pose, not your breath. Inhale, rise up. Interlace your fingers, Kali Mudra. Once again, tuck up your pelvis, breathe in. Exhale, full moon, reach up and over. Maybe little pulses again. Hopefully you're starting to heat up from the inside out. Breathing in and out through your nose, it should make a sound like an ocean wave. You can think of your inhale as our inward journey, Purusha. And our exhale is our outward journey, Prakriti. It's all about duality in yoga, finding the balance between both. In our rise up. Exhale, hands down. Now, maybe you start to shift forward and back through your cat cow. Maybe you go wider through your knees. Maybe you come down to your forearms. Awesome, not too long. Take the moment to center yourself. Don't be in a rush to get to where we're going. Then we're going to come onto your hands. Adjust your knee if you need to. Pick up your left foot, step it to the outside of your left hand. Runner's lunge, adjust your stance if you need. Maybe move your hips forward, back, side to side. Sometimes I like to circle. Deep breaths. All right, and now pick up your back knee. Exhale, step up, Malasana, frog squat. Sinking down low through the hips, sitting up tall through your head, hands to heart center, Samasiti Hi, coming back to intention. Intention is what separates yoga from gymnastics, Pilates, 
all the other wellness modalities, which are good, but these other modalities ask you to become the body, that ask you to become the mind, but yoga asks you to become the soul. It asks you to use the mind, the body, and the heart to discover the potent energy of your soul. And so yoga is not so much about what we're doing, how we're doing it is far more important. Keep feeling into this practice. Honor your body, right? You are Purusha, I would be Parati. Breathe in. Exhale, hands down, step, walk, or jump back. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shwanasana. All right, you might take a peek at me, unless you've done my classes a bunch of times, then you know what these are. I call them frog hops. I'm gonna inhale lift my heels. I'm gonna exhale, bend my knees. I'm gonna hop my feet outside my hands, frog swap. Every time I land, I'm gonna inhale, reach my arms up. Then I'm gonna exhale, plant my hands, and lightly jump it back. If you've got bad knees, just step your feet up one at a time. And if you're happy and you know it, then what I want you to do is Clap your feet as you hop up, and maybe even as you hop back. But it's not about how high you get, it's about how softly you land. So don't just chuck yourself into this. Try to lightly move through it, okay? Let's do about five more of those. So, you know, lift your heels, bend your knees, look where you want to land, hop up, maybe a little foot clap, and then land softly. In our arms up. Exhale, hop it back lightly. Four more. We move with our breath. Three. If you're getting some hang time, think about squeezing your feet together and you'll lock in to a diamond handstand. You don't have to. Only if you're starting to feel that connection. That's not what we're going for, though. We're mainly just Warming up our body. Good. And last time, lift your heels, bend your knees, look forward, hop up, maybe a little tuck in, land softly in your frog squat. Notice your breathing. Can you calm your heart rate? We can't control the situations we're put in life, but we can control how we respond. That response, Purusha, right? We let go of attachment to the external factors, those things around us, we come home to that place inside of us that cannot be changed, affected, taken away from us, our soul. Breathe in. Exhale, hands down, modified, four fold. You can bend your knees still. Can you lift your heels? Pressing your palms, you got three options. Option one is hop, option two is slide, Option three is press. We're gonna lean forward and draw your feet together. Uttanasana, hold, hold. In our outer Uttanasana, halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold, chin to chest. And I'll reach up and over, Urdhva Hastasana, reaching towards the sky, a little back bend. Exhale, Samastitihi, hands to heart center. Take a slow breath in. Take a slow breath out. Take your hands behind your back, binding, either grabbing hands or opposite elbows. You know, lift your heart. Exhale, bound forward, fold. It's okay to bend your knees. I like to shake my shoulders to the right and left a few times. Keep your bind in a halfway loop. Exhale, chaturanga, step walk or jump into it. Take your time. In our up dog. Exhale, down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good. Slow breath in. Slow breath out. Let's inhale, lift your right leg high. And as you exhale, let's draw your right knee to your left elbow, crossing your body. Now inhale, extend the right leg beside you. Fall in triangle, plant your back heel, left arm comes up. And then as you exhale, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna take a forward fold, reaching beyond your toes if you can, sweeping the floor, left hand behind you in a wild thing. Pick up your pelvis, arch your back. 
Now as you exhale, sink and sweep. Reach forward like you're smoothing the surface of water. Plant the right hand in a falling triangle. Think of this one more like a side plank. Exhale, sink down and sweep. In a wild thing, arch back bend. Exhale, sink, sweep. Inhale, falling triangle, scoop hip under hip. One more time, exhale, sink. Inhale, arch up, wild thing. Exhale, sink and sweep. In a falling triangle. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog, ekapada. Exhale, take your knee to your nose and step lightly to the outside of your right hand. So I guess it was knee to your shoulder head. Runner's lunge, round two. Move your hips. Now, you might use some blocks. You might come onto your fingers. But what I don't want you to do is to force this movement. It's called runner split. I'm going to inhale, lean back, extending my right leg. I'll move my arms so you guys can see. And then I'm going to exhale, bend my front knee, lunging forward. So we're going to inhale, lean back, leg doesn't have to go straight. Exhale, lunge forward. We've got three more ones. Inhale, back knee, flex your toes. Exhale, lunge. Just two more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last time, inhale. And exhale, runner's lunge. Pick up your back knee and pivot to your left. Prasarita, wide leg, forward fold. Take a few breaths here. Maybe arms come forward. Maybe arms come back. They can go around your feet or even behind your back. Whatever you're feeling. Take some time. Take your hands to your hips. And now rise up cross Sarita A using your core to stand, not your back. Exhale, goddess pose, heels in, bend your knees. Make sure your knees are in line with your toes. Make sure you're tucking up your pelvis. And now reach your arms above you. Exhale, half moon, right hand behind your back. Reach over through your left arm. And now both arms up. Exhale, half moon, other side, left hand behind your back. Inhale, we rise. Gracefully exhale, swimming through the air. Inhale. Exhale, legs are firm, upper body soft. One more full round, maybe close your eyes as you move your energy, your prana, your chi. As you inhale, stand up tall. Exhale, warrior two, facing forward. Inhale, reverse, Viparita Virbhadrasana. Keep your front knee bent. Arch your ribs, try not to bend your back. Exhale, parjwo, kumasana, extended side angle, maybe elbow to knee. Hang the right arm down, eventually down to the floor. Inhale, reverse, reach up, reach back. Exhale, extend like you're slicing swords. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend. Inhale, warrior two, virabhadrasana two. Exhale, parge vokanas, and extend inside angle, elbow to knee this time. Arch up through the ribs as you inhale. Exhale, half bind, left hand behind your back. Fingers to the inner thighs if you can. Opening your chest, you may or may not use a block. Maybe you hang the right arm down, you don't have to. Eventually, fingertips are the block. One day, palm, but don't collapse. We want to expand and open, even if that means elbow stays on your knee, okay? Let's inhale, warrior two. You might still use your block. Exhale, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Pick up your back leg. Now a hand on your hip will help. But once your bones are stacked, lift your left shoulder. Maybe you ch challenge yourself by looking up. Can you trust the pose? The secret is the higher your back leg, the easier this pose gets to balance. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, standing split, left hand down. Relax your head. I like to do some little kicks through my left leg, engaging my hamstrings. Many hands walk back in line with your toes, head towards your shin. Push into gravity. Breathe into the hamstrings. Deep breath in. 
At the left knee to your chest, round and curl. Inhale, extend the left leg. Exhale, knee to chest, challenge. Lift your right heel, push into your hands. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee to your chest. Challenge one, lift your right heel. Challenge two, keep your left knee to chest. Challenge three, can you lift your right leg into the air? Maybe a little handstand, but just the right leg up. Awesome, if you're in your handstand, slowly lower the right leg down. Face forward, you now stand up, one leg in pose. The closer your left knee stays to your chest, the easier the balance, okay? So standing crane, stork, spoonbill, whatever kind of bird you're feeling like today. Now, finding your breath, maybe hands at heart, hips are up tall, can you extend the left leg? Now we want to avoid it, we want to get out of the discomfort, but can you embrace it? Go beyond the mind, lift your heel higher, wrap in your core, and now reach your arms up, straight leg, exhale, standing split, dive down, the slower the better. And now step back to a little lunge, silently, exhale, Chaturanga, step back. And now, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, up dog. Exhale, Auto Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths, reset. And now lift your left leg high. Exhale, cross left knee, right elbow. And now, falling triangle, extend the bottom leg, lift your right arm. Exhale, take a seat. Sweep the mat, reach forward. In a wild thing, right hand down, hips lift. Exhale, sink and sweep. In a falling triangle, remember more side plank, hip under hip. Exhale, we sink and sweep. In a wild thing. Exhale, sink and sweep. How low can you go? In a falling triangle. Last round, exhale, reach, inhale, arch, exhale, sink, last time, falling triangle, exhale, plant the right hand, in a three-legged dog, left leg, huh, exhale, left knee, left shoulder, step outside your left hand, runner's lunge, drop your back knee, catch your breath. Maybe grab your blocks. Remember, your leg does not have to be straight to feel the benefits. And now runner split, lean back, extending the left leg. Exhale, runner's lunge, bend the front knee, shift the pelvis forward. And now we lean back. Exhale, fold. Three more. Working more the inner thigh than the hamstring. Last time, inhale. And then exhale, pick up your back knee, turn to your right, cross a rita. Padottanasana, maybe piece fingers to your big toes. Always the option for inversions, headstand, handstand. I like to just pivot my hips right and left, because we're working with our inner thighs quite a bit today. Maybe you can even cat cow your tailbone. Hands to hips. Now slowly stand. Exhale, goddess pose. Heels in, knees bent. Tuck your tail. And now reach your arms up nice and high. Exhale, half moon, left arm behind your back. Reach over to the right. And now both arms up, sink lower. Exhale, half moon, other side. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bend. Inhale, receive. Exhale, get. One more full round, maybe close your eyes. Move with your energy. Make this a soulful practice. As you can now stand up. Exhale, Virabhadrasana, warrior two, facing forward, left knees bent. Make sure it's a solid warrior two. 
you know, reverse warrior, reach up, reach back, fanning the ribs, not just the top side, the bottom side. Exhale, Parjwa Konasana, extended side angle, modified or extended. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, warrior two. Extended side angle, elbow to knee. Inhale, arch up through the ribs. Exhale, half bind. Hands behind your back. Maybe fingers to the inner thigh. Keep scooping your hip under you. Maybe left arm hangs down to block. Fingers to the floor, palms to the floor, but not if you have to collapse your chest. Breathe. Can you find peace even under challenging circumstances? We know the benefits. The question is, are you willing to pay for those benefits? In a warrior two, exhale, half moon, reach forward, maybe to a block, pick up your back leg. Take a second to establish balance. And maybe you challenge it, shifting your gaze up. It's funny what just changing our gaze can do to the physical pose, right? Same pose, different focus point can really throw us off. But it's all the same, Purusha. Don't get distracted by Parakti. Standing split, hands down. Take a second. So I'm a bit tighter in my legs. That's why I like to do the kicks. You can also lengthen your stance if you want, hands farther forward. But eventually, hands want to be in line with your toes, with the palms down. So for me, hands go about a foot in front of my foot. Deep breath in. Exhale, right knee to chest. In our right leg, up. Exhale, right knee to chest, challenge. Pick up your left foot. In our right leg, high. Exhale, knee to chest, challenge one, pick up your left heel. Challenge two, keep your right knee to chest. Challenge three, lift your left leg into the air with stability if you can. It's that compression of the knee to the chest that's gonna give you the stability in your handstands. Left leg comes down, gaze comes forward, and I'll rise up to standing. One leg at close. Try to get rid of the back bend. Hands wherever you feel connected. Extend the right leg for five, for four, for three, for two, for one straight leg, standing slip. And I'll step back. Exhale, chaturanga the thus. And I'll up dog. Exhale, down. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, step, walk, or jump to a seated position. Awesome. Take your feet out in front of you, Baddha Konasana. If you're ever short on time, and you're like, oh, I wanna get stronger and more flexible, try to up these sit-ups, they're great. Diamond sit-ups. We're gonna lay back. And then we're gonna exhale, shift forward, trying to touch the top for a minute. And I'll lay all the way back. Exhale, sit up. Reach forward. Inhale. Exhale. It's going to be harder the closer your heels are in two. Inhale. Exhale for three. Inhale. Exhale for two. Inhale. Exhale for one. If you ever need more, pause the video. Do five, ten more. I know we all have different time constraints. All right, sit up tall. Kali Mudra. Raise the arms forward. Boat pose. Can you pick up your feet? And we're gonna keep the knees open like a diamond so we can inhale, extend our feet through our psoas. Then we're gonna exhale, tap our toes right to your fingers. Inhale, extend, hello hamstrings. Exhale, tap. Inhale for three, exhale. Inhale for two, exhale. Inhale for one, exhale. Feet down, Baddha Konasana. Fold. Now eventually our knees will be on the mat and your head will be to your feet. Keyword is eventually, breathe. Take your time.
All right. Like I said, you can always pause the video if you want more time in these poses. But for now, let's get back into our practice, yeah? Downward facing dog. Shake it out. Loosen up. Inhale, let's lift your right leg high. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, cross the body in a fallen triangle. Exhale, take a seat and sweep. How far forward can you reach? In a wild thing. Exhale, take a seat. Sweep, reach forward. In a fallen triangle. Challenge, if you want it. Pick up your right foot. Challenge two, grab the outside seat of your foot. Challenge three, a little compass pose. Can you reach your foot forward? Maybe look under your left armpit. In a three-legged dog, right leg high. Exhale, right knee, right shoulder. Option for your hurdler's pose if it's in your practice or just step into your runner's lunge. We'll meet you there. Now, with your runner's lunge, once again, option to just keep the back knee lifted or if you want a little bit more, pick up your back knee. Listen to your body's wisdom, okay? So I'm going to extend my front leg as I bend my back knee. I'm going to bend my front knee as I extend my back leg. You can always just stick with that original version. Or maybe this feels good for you. We've got three more. In. Exhale. Breathe in. Extend. Exhale. Bend. One more time. Inhale. And then exhale. Turn to your left. Cross Arita. Once again, it's your time. Spend it however you like. Maybe you want to start working on your middle split. A little bit easier for me because I've got my socks on, so I can just slide into it. But you never want to drop into it, right? So I like to have one hand back, one hand forward, so I can kind of control the pressure on my thighs and hamstrings. And then I switch which hand is in front and back. Deep belly. Taking your time. Right, if you're inverted, moving your feet back. If you are in split like me, come back to cross Rita. Hands to hips, and I'll stand up tall. Exhale, goddess pose. Good, same demo. Now lift your right arm high. Take it behind your head. Take your left hand behind your back. Maybe you can grab your opposite hand, Gomokasana. If not, maybe top arm just grabs, maybe your left arm grabs your right elbow. Whatever feels better for your body. Sink lower. Breathe through the resistance. Whether it's physical or mental, maybe even emotional today. Can you move beyond those layers? Deeper. With your breath. Into your soul. Into Purusha. Prakriti is the mud that grows the lotus. It's not bad, but it's not comfortable. Remember why you're growing. Let's release your arms, and I'll stand up tall. Exhale, warrior two, facing forward, right knee bend. In our reverse warrior. Exhale, triangle pose, trikonasana. Right legs extended. In our reverse, right knee lunges, lift up. Exhale, triangle pose, trikonasana. One more time, inhale, reverse. Exhale, triangle pose, pause, everything engages. Remember, it's not about coming down, it's about coming up. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, extended side angle, elbow to knee. Option for half bind, option, option for full bind, take your hands together. Make sure you go under your leg and not under your bum. Now this is optional, you might watch me. It's one of my favorite variations. I'm going to look down and slide my back foot forward. Option for your bound half moon. So I soften my shoulders as I straighten my legs, lifting my left leg up. My gaze is off to the side. If you're not about this, struggling with it, just meet me in your regular half moon. It's a pretty tricky balance. But the more you're open to it, the more likely you're going to hold it. You can't try too hard. Let's release it to standing slip. Left leg high. Maybe one hand behind your ankle, maybe both hands. 
Always the option to practice your handstands again. Maybe you're just trying to reach your left leg higher and higher. Deep breath in. Exhale, left knee to your chest. And now stand up tall. One legged pose. Find your balance. I'm going to face forward so you can see me. So left knees into your chest. You can grab your knee. Maybe peace fingers to your big toe. Maybe right hand to your hip. Remember, it's more important that your bottom leg is straight than your top leg. Big toe pose. Extending your left leg forward. If you feel balanced, right arm high. Five, internally rotate. Four, thighs engage. Three, breathe. Two, sit up tall. One, can we open up? Good. Once you establish the balance, big challenge. Gaze over your right hand. Five, four, three, two, one. Coming back to center, no arms. Can you keep the extension? Once again, option to watch me. Option to handstand into chaturanga. I'm gonna come through to my standing slit. I'm gonna hop up, bending my elbows with control into low plank. Up dog, then down dog. Give it a few tries if you want. So if you're new to this, watch me. What you can do, little hop. And then eventually, you'll put a little bit more oomph into it. And then one day, maybe you try full handstand, where both legs lift up, and you lower down. Now the secret is to flex your fingers and pull through the arms, so that you can control the descent. Downward facing dog. In a left leg hop. That's a left knee, right elbow, cross your body. In a falling triangle. Exhale, take a seat. Sweep your arms. Inhale, wild thing, arch up. Exhale, take a seat. Sweep, how low can you go? In a falling triangle. Challenge, pick up your left foot. Challenge two, grab the blade edge of it. Challenge three, compass pose. Extend your foot forward, maybe you can look under your right shoulder. In a three-legged dog, left leg high. Exhale, knee to shoulder, option, challenge, hurdler's pose, kundinyasana. We all need runner's lunge. Option for back knee to stay down, or do a lizard transition. We're gonna inhale, extend your front leg, maybe bending your back knee. Exhale, we lunge forward. In a lengthen back. Exhale, lunge. Three more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Last time, breathe in. Exhale, we lunge. And we turn to our right. Prasarita. Once again, it's your choice. What would it feel appropriate? Do you need to rest? Do you need to push? And now stand up tall, releasing the arms, shaking out the shoulders. Exhale, warrior two, left knee bent. And now reverse your warrior. Exhale, trying to pose, extend, reach over. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, trikonasana, trying to pose. 
One more time, inhale, reverse. Exhale, triangle, trikonasana. Extend, reach over, breathe deep, loosen up. Inhale, warrior two. Extended side angle, exhale, elbow to knee. Option for half bind. Option for full bind. Now you can work just the full bind without having to do your bound half moon. That's just an extra, right? Salt and pepper for our practice, not essential. But if you do want to try it, move your back foot in, look off to the side, soften the shoulders, and firm your legs as you slowly start to find your harmony, your balance between the internal and external, between effort and ease. Your inhale and your exhale. So whether you're in half moon or bound half moon, take a deep breath in and exhale really standing split. Once again, it's up to you. Do you want to kick up the handstand? Do you want to challenge your balance? Do you want to just take a sip of water? There's no judgments. Honor what you need. Then we're going to exhale, draw your right knee to your chest. And now stand up with control if you can. Good. Once you feel balanced, maybe hands on your hips. Peace finger your big toe. Let's extend big toe pose. Option, left arm high. We're gonna be here for five, four, three, two, one. Let's see if we can open up the hip. Maybe you guys are gonna be left hand. Five. Four, three, two, one. Let's come back to center. Maybe no arms. Five, four, three, two. Standing split, dive down. Chaturanga, step, walk. Maybe handstand. You can always belly flop. In and up dog. Exhale, down dog. Settle in. And now lift your heels, bend your knees, hop on up, frog pose, malasana. Once again, you're welcome to take a break. If you're sweaty and tired like I am, or maybe you need the extra push today, you are being called to go to that next level. That next level is called bird of paradise, it's a pink pose. So we're gonna take a bind. Left hand down, right hand behind your back. Left hand goes under your thigh, your hamstring, and you're gonna bind your hands. Now we'll see if you can step your feet closer together. We'll lift your left heel. Here's the hard part, you have to look up as you stand up. Once you're up nice and tall, head as high up as you can go, then option to extend your left leg, just an option. And then we'll come back down to your malasana. And if you did one side, you gotta even it out, right? We got a mirror on the other side. So right hand down, left hand behind your back. Take your bind, step in, lift your heel, slowly rise up, slowly. Maybe extend your leg. Smile, breathe. And then come back down. Malasana. Frog pose. Take a seat. Let's extend your legs out wide. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, fold. To wherever you're comfortable. So there's a story from the yogis, the Hindu yogis, of the deity Shiva and Parvati, or Parvriti, excuse my pronunciations. These were two enlightened beings. And Shiva had this devotee who every morning would awake and circle Shiva three times. After a while, Parvriti got a little pissed off about this. Why is the devotee circling both of us when we're both enlightened? So she decided that she would move closer to Shiva and see what the devotee would do. 
he would have to circle and bolt, right? Well, upon seeing Parvriti next to Shiva, the devotee turned himself into a rat and decided just to circle Shiva three times. Shiva thought this was hilarious. So the next day, he decided he would test his devotee and he brought Parvriti into his lap. Now, what would the devotee do? Upon seeing Parvriti in Shiva's lap, the devotee turned himself into a bird and circled Shiva's head three times. Now they were both really into this, and they decided to merge into one being, half Shiva, half Parvriti, half man, half woman. What would the devotee do? How could he not pay tribute to both of them? The devotee decided to turn himself into a bee and just circled Shiva's right leg. So many of us are like this devotee, so attached to only one aspect of reality, of life. When there's two sides to the coin, so many of us are so stuck in our physical that we forget our spiritual. We're so attached to our mind that we lose connection to that deeper feeling. And this is the purpose of yoga, to bring us into union with both aspects of life, both the known and the unknown. Let's sit up tall, take your legs together, roll onto your back, hug your knees into your chest, circle them out. Let's extend your left leg forward, Exhale, supine twist, right knee over to your left, gaze over your right shoulder. Ardha Matsi Andrasana. Take some deep breaths. Let's come back to center. Draw your left leg in. Slide your right leg forward, breathe in. Exhale, supine twist, other side. Take your time. Inhale back to center. Give yourself one last hug. Deep breath in. Exhale, Shavasana. Legs long, palms up, eyes closed. Shavasana is the perfect embodiment of Purusha and Parakti. Shavasana is known as the dead man's pose or the corpse pose. But we keep our awareness. We don't drift off into the unknown, but we experience it through the body, through the mind, through the heart, but from a distance. Can you feel the separation? And in that separation, can you feel the connection?
slow breath in. Take a full breath out. Feel the duality. Purusha is what we are. Our body, our mind, and our heart is what we have to experience. We're experiencing ourself. Just like the seed that becomes the lotus flower to produce another seed, our practice, we move into ourselves to rediscover ourselves, to move out of ourselves, to discover each other back to ourself, right? Slowly using your breath to mindfully move, to bring meaning to this experience, intention through your body. When you're ready, join me in seated meditation crossing your legs, sitting up tall, uniting Shiva and Parvriti, our hands together at our heart. Recently, they took a picture of the furthest point in space we've ever seen before. You should look up this picture. It's just a bunch of lights with space. The furthest we've ever seen, light years away, is just light and space. And they taken that same technology and they looked as far into the human body as they possibly could. And you know what they found? Space. Particles of light and space. See, Parakti is an illusion. Everything, your body, me, the yoga block, this video, is just made up of space, but somehow materially come into existence through Parakti, but it is Purusha. You are Purusha, I am Purusha. So as we close our eyes, we come into our heart center, into the space inside where the universe dwells, a place of love, truth, joy, light. When you come into the space, when I come into the space, we become one. And we honor this oneness, not as meaningless, but as miraculous. We take a deep breath in, and as we exhale, we bow to each other, saluting. Namaste.